help everyone out there is testing the Rails application. Here I have a Rails app that I built in episode number 257 on request specs, and I can run the specs and with the rake spec command and see them pass. However, it's a little bit tedious to run that rake command every single time we change files, and if you get a large test suite, you wait, have to wait for the entire thing to finish, even if you just changed one file. So it would be nice if there was some way to automate the running of these specs. Now there are a lot of tools to help solve this problem, but my current favorite is Guard. This is a generic way to listen to file modifications and then perform some kind of action on that. And there are a lot of Guard extensions available for many different kinds of environments. So if we check a look at, take a look at these available Guards here, you can see that there's all kinds of neat things we can do with Guard, including Guard RSpec, which will do just what we want, where it uh, listens for file changes and then runs the specs when they change. Now, if you aren't using RSpec and just using traditional unit tests, check out the Guard Test Gem, which basically does the same thing in that environment. And there's also Guard Cucumber and Guard Mini Test and pretty much any other environment you can think of. So now let's give this a try and install Guard RSpec into the application I showed you earlier, which we built in episode 257. So here's my test group here, which I want to add the Guard Gem to. Don't worry too much if your gems don't match these exactly. Uh, but one important thing is that we install the FS Event Gem if we're on Mac OS X, because that's a dependency of Guard. So what I like to do is add this to my gem file so that it installs the FS Event Gem if our, we have a Darwin Ruby platform, which is uh, Mac OS X. And then we just need to install Guard RSpec just like that. And we don't also have to specify guard because that's already dependency of guard RSpec here. And then run the bundle command to get those gems installed. And then we need to initialize guard, so guard init RSpec. And you might want to prefix this with a uh, bundle execute if you have trouble running it, but it depends on your how your system's set up. So we'll run guard init RSpec and that creates a guard file uh, which has some instructions on how to behave, which we can leave at the defaults for now, but I'll show you how to customize it later. Now, Guard also has full support for Growl notifications, so if you want to get that working, you can also install the Growl gem, and there's also a couple notify options for Linux as well. Um, I personally don't like these kind of notifications, so I don't use it, but it's there if you want it. Now, once you have all that set up, just run the Guard command to start up the Guard server, and notice it starts off by just running all the specs which pass. And now if we edit a file, it'll automatically run the specs in the background. For example, I'll comment out this validation in a model, and then you can see it's running the task specs, and notice it fails. So let me uncomment this, and then when it runs the specs, it should pass again, and then it'll run them all to make sure they're all still passing. That works. Now what if we want to customize this behavior a little? For example, I have a view file here, and when I change this view file, I would like it to run the request specs we made in episode number 257. So let me try this out and just save this view file here. And notice it didn't run any additional specs here. It didn't detect that change. Now we can add this behavior using the guard file that was generated in the init command. So here's what that generated guard file looks like, which you can find at the root of your project. And notice there's a nice Rails example here for defaults for a Rails application, which work pretty well, but you may want to modify them slightly. So here's the way it works. You basically call watch inside of here and pass it a path to a file in your project. And when that file gets modified, it's going to run the specs which are passed in the block here. So if your routes get modified, it'll look for a routing spec and run those. Now, some cases are more complex, such as these regular expressions here. For example, if anything under the lib directory is modified, notice it captures the what is modified in parentheses here, and then it runs that spec which matches that specific lib file, and that matching parentheses argument is passed inside of here. But notice everything is matching here is Ruby files, so I want it to run the specs when uh, view files have changed. So for this, what I'm going to do is basically add a new watch command inside of here, and then run, watch the app views directory, and then capture everything until the last slash. This way it'll capture the path, such as tasks in this case, which we can then use inside this block to run the request specs. So we want to run the spec uh, requests directory, that's where it's located, 
and then match whatever's passed into the parentheses, which is the directory in the views files, and then spec.rb. So that'll run the request specs when we update our views. So now let's try this out again by editing our view file. Oh, by the way, you'll need to restart guard when you edit your guard file. Uh, so be sure to do that, which I've already done. So let's try this out, modify our view file and save it. And notice it says it's running the tasks request specs. And it says I couldn't find an add button because I removed it. Maybe I forgot a equal sign there. Add it back and now all of our tests should be passing again. And they do. As you can see, Guard is an awesome way to automatically run your tests when your files change. But there's so many other neat things you can do with Guard as well. Just look at the available guards for some ideas. I mean, you can automatically uh, compile CoffeeScript and SAS files when they change. Uh, you can automatically run the bundle command when your gem file changes. Uh, you can also restart the passenger or your PAL server if you're using either one of those. When your you know initializer files or config files change, it'll automatically restart it. Um, but one in particular I want to demonstrate here is Live Reload because it's a pretty awesome gem uh, for automatically reloading your browser when files change. So to install this, we can go to our gem file and add guard live reload here, just like that. And then run the bundle command to get it installed, and then run guard init live reload to add the necessary content to your guard file. And then you just start up guard again. Next, you'll have to install the live reload extension in your browser, and you can do that on the live reload GitHub page. There's links to that further down. So for example, here I'm using Safari, and I'll just install the live reload uh, extension here for that. Double click it, we'll install it. And just like that, it's installed. And then you can just enable it in your application. So here I have my Rails application, and I can just right click and choose enable live reload. And then we can go into our application and edit any file. For example, here in my style sheet file, I can go in here and change the background color of this page. Let's set it to a gray color. And then right when I choose save, notice it changes directly in the browser instantly using live reload. We don't have to refresh the browser at all. And this is really nice with style sheets, especially because it doesn't actually have to reload the page at all. You can just change this to anything you want and it will change the color of the background and do any modifications you make to style sheets without actually doing a reload of the page. And this will work with any other files too. So for example, on this ERB file, let's change this to the title to say to-do list and then save it. And there's actually going to be quite a bit of delay here because what's happening is it's running the specs first and then it's getting to uh, actually getting to live reload. So let's change this in our guard file. So if we take a look at that guard file, you can see that live reload is at the bottom here. So that means it's going to happen after we run the RSpec guard. So it's important to put it at the top here so that it happens first because it's quicker. So with that change, now you can see when we edit our title and then save it, it takes place instantly in the browser. Neat. Well, that wraps up this episode on guard. I certainly enjoyed using this in my own projects and I hope you do too.